Hello everybody, give me Scoop and welcome to another video for Scoop's Quest for the Best, which is the, the series where I'm looking for the best uh, movie that I've ever seen, and uh, yeah, let's go. War Dogs is a great movie that is sadly stuck in the middle of an identity crisis. Now before I really get into this review, I want to preface it with something that I left out of my founder review. I don't care if the movie's story is true or not. You can say it's too fictionalized, which shits on the real life events, which changes key elements to make it fake, whatever, whatever. I don't really care. When I read a movie, I base it on the movie. I don't care what you change from real life. As long as the movie is good, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Onward has a beautiful message at its core, and I'm sure the director went through a lot of painful moments to arrive at a place where he could deliver that message, but the movie itself just isn't that great and I don't cut it slack because of what the director went through in his childhood. Okay, with that said, let's get on to my actual review of War Dogs. This movie's freaking nuts. How David Pacquiao is played by Miles Teller goes from a massage therapist to a massive international arms dealer is a story you need to see to believe. However, I came to this conclusion on my own despite the fact that the movie likes to remind you how crazy it is. I'm not kidding. Miles Teller narrates a lot in this movie which I like because most movies have a narrator at the beginning and at the end and drop it for the entire middle, but War Dogs keeps it consistent, so good job. My name is David Packhouse, and I'm an international arms dealer. The American Embassy offered little to no help in dealing with the Ministry of Customs. Before we could begin, AEY still needed to be vetted by the government. I pled guilty and was sentenced to seven months house arrest. David constantly stops his giant narrative exposition dumps to remind you, yes you, the person watching this video, and possibly the person who has watched this movie, how crazy the story you're watching is. The viewer just doesn't need this. Okay, fine, in one or two situations, it's kind of fun to remind the viewer, like, bruh, they are literally repacking a hundred million bullets to ship to the US government in some random warehouse in the middle of Albania. But doing this every time something crazy happens is its just unnecessary. You don't need it. However, the movie reminding you of how crazy it is doesn't really detract from the fact that it's true. The movie is crazy, and it's one of my favorite aspects. If you couldn't already tell, I love these corporate drama movies. Wolf of Wall Street, The Founder, The Social Network, War Dogs. I love all these movies, and I honestly think War Dogs really stands out with its scale. While nothing will ever top the yacht scene of The Wolf of Wall Street, the sheer number of insane things that these characters do really elevate the film. This is also probably due to the film structure. It's really good. Not as good as The Founder or any of the other business movies I mentioned, which all flow like like Gene Mulvihill's Class 5 Lazy River Rapids, but it, it flows well. War Dogs does drag in a few spots, but for the most part, the structure is very good. There's a fairly long expository scene at the beginning, but it introduces the characters and the way they sell guns and some other stuff, as exposition does. This is probably the funniest part of the movie because you're getting used to Ephraim's character, who is just insane by the way, and how he interacts with David. We then move to Act 2 where AEY is formed and David and Ephraim land the Beretta deal. <laughs> this is where the movie is most interesting in my opinion because it just gets nuts on a visual level while still being funny and pretty exciting. Watching Ephraim sleaze his way through the deal. I know you're upset, but from one Christian to another, but from one Christian to another. David lied to his wife about the new job and meeting AUI's biggest investor are all great scenes. And yes, watching David and Ephraim cram into this truck with hundreds of guns in the back, and this dude Marlboro, who is apparently the best smuggler in all of Jordan, is awesome. There's a good sense of dread of the two getting caught and establishing that they are willing to cover up their deals with the government in order to get some sweet cuja de Nero. We then get to Act 3, where David and Ephraim start making it big after the Beretta deal and building their business. David gets him, his wife, and their new daughter, literally the sickest apartment I've ever seen in a movie. And Ephraim are just, you know, David and Ephraim, they're just best friends at this point. It's cool. It's fun. Then AEY lands the Afghan deal. Now, the point of the movie is that the company that they have, AEY, is built on picking up the breadcrumbs of the war industry. You know, they get, like, the, uh, the, the 15 uh, guns here and the the 500 rounds of ammunition here, the, that, you know, they call it the breadcrumbs. The, the, let's just call it the breadcrumbs. This is because the bigger companies would typically pass over this stuff, so it's all super easy to fill and it's just easy money. But the current offer for the Afghan deal was a hundred million dollars. But the problem is, it includes a crap ton of supplies, including the 100 million rounds of AK-47 ammo I mentioned before. 
but the two get Bradley Cooper to hook them up with all the supplies because Albania needs to sell it off. The specifics of the deal don't really matter, but trust me, the movie makes sure that it all makes sense with a little too much exposition, but it's still good. And this part of the movie specifically is explained cleanly and quickly, and I like it. So they start the deal and it's going crispy, but then it turns out it's all Chinese ammo. And the US is like, ew, Chinese, that's not okay, my guy. So David and Ephraim have to repack all the ammo and send it to the government, no problemo. Okay, now it's finally time to get to my thesis statement. This is where the movie clearly has an identity crisis. Ephraim starts to screw over everyone to get that sweet, sweet dough. And I can see him screwing over Bradley Cooper's character, because, you know, that's pretty in character for Ephraim. But why David? It really feels like there was some kind of scene setting up a conflict between the two beyond Ephraim, I don't like I'm doing all the work to sell all the stuff, but you get the bigger cut. Because that's a fair disagreement and, a, you know, a good reason that for David to be mad. So then when David threatens Ephraim, which to be fair, it's a pretty light threat and David probably wouldn't really go through with all things considered, it just feels so weird that Ephraim immediately jumps to wrecking David's office and ripping up their contract. I assume there was something more here that probably got cut to keep this thing under two hours because like I said, the film does drag in a few places, but I really feel like it could have improved the story if this conflict really got to fester during the film. And now the identity crisis. The reason I keep comparing War Dogs to films like The Founder and The Social Network is because I think they're trying to copy this type of structure. The two or three business partners where one is a total dirtbag who screws over the others. However, in those films, it's build up for the whole movie. In The Founder, Ray Kroc becomes more and more ballsy with his anti-McDonald's Brothers moves as the movie goes on, and the court scenes point out all the things Zuckerberg does to mess with Eduardo. In War Dogs, it just kinda happens, making Ephraim feel like a pretty hollow character. So in conclusion, I really enjoy War Dogs. It has some glaring issues, which I obviously exploited in this video, but the story's exciting, and I like the style both visually, it's very Zack Snyder TBH, which I don't really mind, you know, not too much slow-mo, but there's a good amount. And they got that consistent voiceover, which for whatever reason, no other movie can seem to do. And all the actors are doing a really great job. This movie's kind of hard for me to rate because like I said, it has problems, but I still really like it. So I'll just give it a seven out of 10 for me, but maybe like an objective six out of 10. Okay, yeah, that's it. Keep it crispy, bye.